Okay, let's get started. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about this piece um, and uh, how to push it a little bit further. But before I get started, if you want your work critiqued, if you're wondering how to get your work critiqued, just go to istabrat.com and click on the subreddit icon right here. This will take you to the subreddit. Right now on the subreddit, there is a little contest challenge going on. It's an art challenge. It's the Floral Humanoid Design Challenge. It's a creature design slash character design challenge. Click on it, read through it. The winner will win a masterclass, uh, my masterclass for free, a portfolio review, which is sitting with me at, for an hour on call for free. I'll be going over your portfolio, building you a curriculum, helping you move forward with your skill building. A copy of Portrait Studio if you don't already have it, and my brushes, uh, as well as attending a call with me and helping me critique the people who submitted work for the challenge. So you get to be live on my uh, on my channel, um, which is really cool because I love when I, it's not just about me, you guys are there with your voices. Uh, it makes it all so much more real because it's only ever my voice and it just feels like Instabrack Universe Population 1, but if you guys are part of it, part of my videos, which is why I just take it so seriously when you guys are on call with me, these are real people who are part of this community, who are, are active in this community, which makes it so much more real for me personally. You at least have three weeks to complete it for that Tuesday the 16th. If not, it'll be Tuesday the 30th of May. Portrait Studio and the Masterclass, are, are they on sale? Aren't they? I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm going to lift the sale up sometime this week. Uh, both are 50% off at the moment. My Masterclass teaches you how to draw a portrait from scratch. I have not seen a single person use it and not come back to me with uh, really good reviews. I'm actually really proud of what I did with this. I poured 10 years of teaching experience into it and its cost is $90, but right now it's half off. Let's get started for today. Today I'm going to do something a little bit more relaxed, which is I'm just going to make this portrait just more realistic and talk about how that happens. So right now this portrait, my issue with it, I encourage tracing. If it gets your foot in the door, I encourage it. However, the bad side of it is it creates this really stale lassoed look. So I want to fix that. Um, and the way to fix it is to you know, keep those lines you traced, keep them in there, but go back to your basics. Um, so they are beard shadow, meaning at the central sphere. And in my master class, if you've ever used it, I start with this bad boy. I draw a big egg, throw a shadow on it with radial shading, and everything comes out of that portrait. So that if it's embedded in your mind, the shadow is not something you eventually shed, that you keep this until D-Day. Like you, you keep this until the final day. All right, then there's the planes of the head. You're missing a huge plane right here. I don't care if your photograph didn't have it. The photograph was a bad one, all right? Or overexposed or edited or filtered, who knows? But there are some really essential blocks here that are missing that should be promoted in order to make the face feel three-dimensional in its world. The portrait world, the, port the, the, the world of the canvas needs these fundamentals. These fundamentals are not going to damage your painting. They're going to help it. Um, then the six dark spots. I already added some here. The eye sockets, though you do have some shadows, are not quite there yet. There needs to be a little bit more. Why? Because we need to climb out of them. Some texture issues with the eyebrows. Then there's value sharing here. It's hard to tell if it's pigmentation because of like uh, blood traffic or it's uh, uh, just the shadows. And of course, there's the texture issue with the lip edge and the cylinder that's missing. You have a little bit there to give you credit. And then um, just making the eyes feel more alive. So I'm going to be doing all of that. And it's really quick. It goes by really quickly, which is why I take this time to apply these red lines. Just to show you, this is the general blueprint, the map that I'm following, um, including the beard shadow. For the changes I'm about to make, I might make them in sporadic order, who knows. But, um, but that, that's, that's really what I'm going after. And if you feel like I'm brushing through this stuff too quickly, you can just get my masterclass at half off. I cover all of this in depth. I talk about the exact graph and map and route that you're supposed to pick colors from. I pick colors for you. I give you the color swatches and the color palette and I ask you to paint with it. So I do everything for you. Everything is prepared. There's no room for error. Another thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna delete. We're gonna delete at any elevations there are on the face. So the lip is an elevation. I said, how do I tell 
if where the elevations are where you're going to get up off your chair you're going to get some hand sanitizer and you're going to sanitize your hands then you're going to put your hands on your face and then you're going to look feel around on your face for where the bumps are there's a big bump that's our nose and then the lips are two little bumps underneath and then we've got our chin bump that's where we're deleting so now we added that little shadow in between the eyebrows to see how much dimension that added let me show you one more time before after and then i'm going to let that shadow move around the forehead connecting those edges together <laughs> what if i skip the sanitizer well enjoy your flute <laughs> just don't call me just don't tell me it's direct told me to touch my face and i got sick <laughs> instructions unclear shoved raspberry jam straight into my retina how on earth <laughs> water did you do that all right so before after and then i'm going to now take radial shading to a whole new dimension i'm going to pick the dark value right here of the hair and use it on the skin but really really low really lowly and i'm just gonna let it kind of like hover along the edge and what that's going to do is cancel that unnatural edge you have to the face Okay, so again, before, after, things are feeling a little more natural, a little bit more realistic. And this is the really the thing that I wanted to take my time in showing you, this little part right here, because that's really what was missing the most. I'm going to merge that down. And now in a new layer, I'm going to find the next step up. She looks a little bit yellow. I'm going to find the next step up in the color palette, which is a little bit closer to white. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to block it in and use that on all of the major areas that get light. So this, we're still on the blocking stage right now. And I'm just thinking about where the light hangs out, where all those elevations are. And then I'm gonna get that dark red and I'm gonna build up the cylinders of the mouth so that the mouth reaches that believable level of contrast. I'm gonna get my eraser on hard edge and try to get rid of some of that until I get that nice hard edge right there. And you can see how that created a more believable lip fold. I'm doing the same thing on the bottom of the lip, right under the lip, using a lot of red in your shadow. Don't use gray shadows. Don't use dark beige. Never darken your skin tones vertically on the color picker, always along the edge. This beautiful balanced edge between super saturated and de desaturated pastel. There's a nice little middle ground here that looks a lot like skin. I'm going to strengthen the shadow of the nose. If we don't see the nostrils, we can at least see a stronger shadow of the nose. Now I'm going to add that signature uh, eye socket radial shading drop. So 100% feed, which is the color you want as dark as you want it you're not going to use all of it and low opacity and i'm going to slowly gradually drop into that eye socket line merging that down then here's a little trick nobody really talks about is get the shadowiest purpliest red you can find but without using purple get soft brush on low put it on darken or a new layer on darken and zoom out and apply just a little bit more eye socket shadow. I do this in my own paintings. I zoom all the way out and I see if I can push the eye socket shadow a bit further back. What that does is that it creates that real divorce of planes between the eye socket and the rest of the face. Really, really nice trick. We can do it late in the game because we're in digital. And traditionally, you probably have to individually darken every part with your pencil, smudging as you go. But take a look at the difference it created before, after. You hardly noticed it was happening, but it added realism. Isn't that ridiculous? Before, after. At the end of the day, this could be pushed a little bit further. I could level out the colors a little bit further. I feel like the light environment is pretty much non-existent at the moment. 
Um, it could be a little bit more present. The background color could be uh, part of the skin tone color, but the point was today how to make that connection between heavily referenced work and how to make it look like a painting after using heavy reference. Heavy referencing, when I say that, is just a polite way of saying tracing. But that's why I want to call it heavy referencing, because tracing is still referencing. Write that back to me. Tracing is referencing, period. That's, that's it. There's no argument here. There's no splitting hairs here. It's referencing, as, as we would use referencing in any other way um, when we use a, a ruler to measure. Um, not everything is a test of our ability to eyeball or anything like that. Sometimes that's it. We just need to trace and we trace. Um, and it makes all the difference because it makes the painting possible. It makes us feel like the painting is possible. When you work with a handicap, you're not great with measuring. It's great to have that little crutch there. A crutch isn't a bad thing. We should remove all that stigma from crutches, from all of that. I mean, like, like look at how long we've been saying the word crutch for tracing. We didn't even sensitively use it. We just use it as a crutch itself, principally is a bad thing it's not um, a crutch is a crutch it's there for to help um, so tracing if it got you painting that's wonderful i'm happy for you but i want you to also learn how to make your illustrations look like illustrations and not look like photo manipulations so i'm going to leave that here and i'm going to blend one last thing which is the eyebrows and with eyebrow hair we want to just blend it out towards the start of the eyebrow so it actually feels like an eyebrow and I'm going to just connect all those shadows together. <clears throat> so please like and subscribe. Please leave comments. Please comment on the video. Whenever you get a chance, just leave a quick comment, emoji, whatnot. It really helps the channel out. I'm really struggling over here to understand what the point of all this is. I mean, obviously you guys are the point, but just the point of, of trying to make this all keep going. It really is very frustrating, and I wish with all my heart that this never happened, um, and shorts never affected the way chat that YouTube treated other channels, but it is what it is. I'm adding just a slight unibrow. Believe it or not, again, it's one of those hidden secrets that makes the skin look realistic, and I'm adding a little bit of a shadow of a mustache. Again, another strange little trick that pushes the skin to feel more realistic. The point of today was just to explore um these painting looks the look of painting making something look and feel like a painting it's all in allowing the brush to reveal itself to be present while also having a nice balance of of when to smudge it's about knowing the planes of the face it's about radial shading it's about um just building the structure of the face and the, the blending happens after that's how you get that painterly look that you probably are after you might have said man yeah i use this reference i may have traced a little bit i may work really really close to the measurements something like that but now my painting looks too clean it doesn't look like a painting it just looks like a printout um and this is how you do it you do exactly what i did when you smudge we're not smudging all of it you see how there's little traces of brush strokes here you see how that shadow made it feel more like a painting um that's really the stuff I'm talking about. And the main changes that I did were uh, restructuring the uh, planes of the face, the geometric surfaces of the face, the beard shadow, the dark spots, the eyebrow bone, finding the grid line. And if you don't know any of this stuff, it's really easy to pick it up. You just have to look at flat planes. You have to sculpt the face with some clay. You have to explore painting the face without it being a face, just exploring it as a building. Um, and going from there. So before, after. So do you guys see that feeling that it was kind of a little bit too close to a photograph? Kind of painted over a photograph. Um, and after, now it looks like a painting. Um, those main reasons why it looks like a painting is because we did a lot of brushstroke sectional stuff. Whereas in here, it feels like you didn't do much sectional blocking which is why it didn't result in that painterly look it looked a little bit like jagged lassoed do you guys see the magic of the hidden core shadows it's this guy all right this bad boy this bad boy this the baddest of boys the beard shadow 
this one right here, the radial shading. Those are the reasons why the painting looks realistic. It's those hidden core shadows that make it feel like you could reach into your monitor and literally touch your face because it feels so realistic. All my lives are recorded. Uh, I do upload the full stream uh, for patrons only, but that's only a dollar a month. So if you sign up as a patron, it'll support my channel. It'll be really, really great. It's called the Watcher tier on Patreon, but you get all of the full length videos. There will be a shortened video, uh, like 17 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, something like that, posted on my channel. Uh, for free, like publicly. But if you want the full recording, every single brush joke I made, uh, please do consider joining as a patron. Yeah, just started the challenge. Hope I can make it. That's really great. I'm so proud of everyone who's joined. Remember, the winner isn't about who draws the best drawing. What I'm trying to do is find the artist with the most gumption, okay? <laughs> find the artist that is promising, that is just trying to lean into their potential. They're not quite sure how much further to push it, and they're ready for a portfolio review. They're ready for that little push. Uh, one last before and after before I let you guys go. So before, after, before, after. Core shadows are an amazing way to invest your time if you're not sure how to draw. Uh, how, what to do, what to draw, just do some radial form studies, do some big blobs floating in the air. So if you learned something today and you want to watch the full recording, you want to give back, please consider joining as a patron. And you get the full recording at the end of every month. I submit all of them. Portrait Studio and my masterclass are both on sale. If you thought today's class was full of information and jam-packed, you haven't seen my masterclass. You get everything, everything you need to know. You don't have to look for another video in my video history. It's all in the masterclass. It doesn't stop. On top of that, I write it all down for you. So you don't have to take down notes. You just have to read the notes I personally wrote for you. It come, comes with templates. It comes with a grayscale to color tutorial. Um, it comes with a color theory tutorial in that grayscale to color. So I give you swatches to use. It's it's everything you need to know to learn how to paint a portrait. You understand the core shadow, you understand the geometries, how to work with edges, what are edges, what is contrast, all of that is available on my masterclass and it's half off right now. Um, I'll let you guys go. Thank you everyone for watching. If you want to join uh, and want to submit your work for critique, you just have to click on the subreddit icon here and join our subreddit. Thanks guys. Bye.